Living in Australia, that really is the dream, isn't it? Well, for some of you lucky buggers, that dream has actually come true because you've either been born here or you've already got citizenship. Well, for me, I've still got a couple of more years to wait. Lucky me. But before I consider applying for citizenship and renouncing my Britishness, no, I don't have to renounce it, I just have a couple of passports and a Filipino one, I thought I'd try out the Australian citizenship test to see how difficult it is. I wonder what I'm going to score. The test is out of 20, you've got to do all multiple choice questions, five of them you have to get correct, and for the rest, you need a 75% pass rate. It's pretty easy to find, you just go on the Australian Home Affairs website and just follow the links. Let's give it a go. Okay, first question. What do we commemorate on Anzac Day? Hmm, that day off that we get every year. How uncultured of me would it be if I didn't even know what it was about? Well, thankfully I did watch the film Gallipoli on Netflix. The landing of the Australian... Yeah, it's not that one, and it's not that one. Multiple choice. What are the colours of the Australian Aboriginal flag? Well, I do see that one flying with the Torres Strait Islander and the Australian flag quite frequently, having worked in a school. So I'm going to go with black, red, and yellow. What is the Commonwealth coat of arms? Hmm. Well, it's not the national anthem, I don't think. That is something to do with one and three, isn't it? Uh, the Australia's national flower? No. Yeah, well, that wasn't a very difficult question, was it? What happened in Australia on the 1st of January, 1901? Mm, I don't know, but we'll have a look at the answers. The Australian constitution was changed by referendum. The separate colonies were united into a federation of states called the Commonwealth of Australia. The Australian New Zealand Army Corps was formed. All of them seem reasonably plausible. Bugger. I'm going to go with B, mainly because I was always told if you're not sure, just go for the middle one. Always seems to work on the chase. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to learn what the answer is for that one if I do get it wrong, though. What is the capital city of Australia? Well, it's not Brisbane and it's not Perth. And I know that some of you might be thinking, well, why isn't Sydney on there? That would make it a little bit harder. Which of these is an example of freedom of speech? People can peacefully protest against the government's action. Men and women are treated equally in a court of law. Australians are free to not follow a religion. I would go with the protest one. Although when some people started protesting about COVID, didn't the police just tell them to go home because they were breaching COVID laws? Don't get political, Ross. Which of these statements about government in Australia is correct? The government does not allow some religions. <coughs> the government in Australia is secular. Religious laws are passed by parliament. What does secular mean? Are religious laws passed by parliament? Do we have religious laws? Are you allowed to put laws on religion? Let's go with secular and find out what it is afterwards. I'm one of these people that I'm firmly in the belief that if you don't get the answer right, it's okay to get it a little bit wrong, as long as you learn from the answer. Which of these is an example of equality in Australia? Everyone follows the same religion. Men and women have equal rights. Everyone belongs to the same political party. Well, we'd like to think that we do have equal rights. Like losing the question, I guess. Which of these is a responsibility of Australian citizens aged 18 years and over to a tw Ooh, this is the one you get a sausage for, isn't it? To attend local council meetings, to vote in federal or state territory elections and in referendum, and to have a current Australian passport. Well, I do know a lot of Australians that don't actually have a passport, so probably not that one. Otherwise, they're breaking the law. Don't worry, I won't W in. Which of these statements about passports is correct? Australian citizens can apply for an Australian passport, guess so. Sounds legit. Permanent residents can hold an Australian passport. Well, no, because that's the reason why I'm doing the quiz. Australian citizens need a passport and a visa to return to Australia. Well, they don't need a pass. Well, they do need a passport, but they don't need a visa. So I'm going to go with that one. Well, if like me, you found the first 10 questions mighty difficult, it's probably because you aren't a citizen of Australia yet, because all Australians are going to know the answers to these so far, obviously. And if that is the case that you're looking at moving to Australia and you need some help like we did, then you might want to speak to our friends at True Blue Migration Services. True Blue Migration Services is one of Australia's oldest group of MARA registered agents. They've helped hundreds of people move to Australia and make their dreams a reality. Like us, when we made the move to Australia, we probably couldn't have done it without the help of Amara registered agent. But don't just take my word for it. They've had hundreds of positive reviews and you can check out what they've done for people. Like this. 4.9 out of 5 with 320 reviews. Not bad. 5 stars. 5 stars. 5 stars. 5 stars. 5 stars. Oh mate, it just keeps going on, doesn't it? How boring is it when you're quite good at doing your job? What are they good for? Well, efficient, pleasurable. Oh, hello, cheeky. Helping people with sponsorship 
and probably the big one, you just don't need the stress. Because let's face it, what happens if you go through all the process and you get it wrong? The best thing about Trueblue Migration Services is they offer a free, no obligation assessment. So why not let them tell you exactly what your best options are for moving to Australia? And when you do decide to go with them, like the hundreds of other happy customers that they've helped, make sure you tell them who sent you. It really helps the channel. Right, can I fumble through the rest of these questions and get them right enough? Which of these statements about voting in Australian elections is correct? Mm, well, I haven't done one of those yet. People are free and safe to vote for any candidate. Seems legit. Voting is by show of hands. How cool would that be? Like being at school. People must write their name on their vote. Hmm. Well, I'm assuming it's the same as England and most democratic countries. What is the name of the legal document that sets out the basic rules for the government of Australia? And I think that one is the Constitution, not the Federation, not the Commonwealth. They're just other things. What is a referendum? I think they're having one of those soon. A vote to change the government? No, that would be an election. A vote to change the Australian Constitution and then a vote to change the Prime Minister. Let's go with the Constitution. Which arm of government has the power to interpret and apply laws? These are just fancy thesaurus -y words. I don't think it's a judicial one because that's to do with the jury when you break the law. Executive or legislative? Now, I normally would go with B if I don't really know the answer, but I've got a sneaky feeling this is A. Oh, hang on a minute. Have I read this right? The power to interpret and apply laws. Or well, legislative was my idea of changing it. So I've read that one wrong. I think it's now judicial. Okay, which of these is a role of the Governor General? Isn't that the guy that can cancel Australia or cancel the government? The appointment of state premiers? I don't actually even know who does that. I'm assuming it's a vote. Signing all bills passed by the Australian Parliament into law and the appointment of the head of state. Well, well, the head of state is the king, you know, Charlie boy, as I so affectionately get told when I make the joke that we get days off for kings of other countries. I know he's the same king of this country. It was a former colony. It just doesn't really work very well on the joke. We never had days off in England for kings or queens' birthdays. You just had to wait for them to die, and then you get a day off, which you also get here as well. So I love living in Australia because I get more days off. So I'm going to go with signing all bills. Which of these statements best demonstrates Australian values about freedom of expression? Everyone can peacefully express their opinions within the law. People with different views from me need to keep quiet. <laughs> oh, if only that was the case. Only approved topics can be discussed. Well, some people might view that actually that is the case as well. But I think the real thing should probably be A. Should people in Australia make an effort to learn English? Well, I had to demonstrate that I learned English enough by doing an English test. So I think that's probably going to be yes. People in Australia should speak whichever language is most commonly spoken in their local neighbourhood. There is no exception to learn any particular language in Australia. Mm. And yes, English is the national language of Australia and it helps to get an education, a job and to integrate into the community. So I'd say, yes, you should make a bit of an effort. Otherwise, why move to a country if you don't want to learn to speak at least a little bit of their language? They say Australia is isolated. What would it be like living in a closer country but you didn't know how to speak to anyone? In Australia, can you encourage violence against a person or a group of people if you have been insulted? Well, depends where you are because I reckon if you're outside the tavern or a pub, then probably some people would encourage this wrongly. Yes, if you do not intend to carry out the violence. Oh, it's okay, just threaten people. This is a ridiculous question. No, it's against Australian values and the law. Yes, no. I mean, yeah, I'll go with B. Sometimes if I feel very offended. Well, Australians are very thick skinned and I know after living here for two years, it's very hard to offend an Australian unless they're a bit woke. Maybe that's just Queenslanders. Should people tolerate one another when they find that they disagree? Again, depends on where in Australia you might be. It is against the law to disagree. <laughs> Don't disagree. No, people only need to treat each other with respect if they agree with one another. Well, I think that's one of the beauties of the world is the fact that when we do disagree, we get to talk about it in a civilised, non-violent manner, according to question 18. Yes, peaceful disagreement reflects Australian values in relation to mutual respect. And the last question. Which of the following is an example of contributing to the Australian community? Volunteering fundraising for a charity. Yep, go and sell some sausage sizzles. I should not make any effort to get to know other people. <laughs> I'm sure some people do feel like that. And people in Australia should not contribute to the community because Australia is a free country. So we should be paid. Well, we already get paid a pretty fair wage. So I think if you have some spare time, do it volunteering. Your mark was 100%. Look at that. Genuinely, 
I have never done this one before. It's pretty much common sense. I think if I had to do this test and I wasn't given multiple choices, I would struggle, especially with the 75% bit. I would probably come close, maybe 60, maybe 65. But some of those ones I had to use my chase logic and vote for the middle one. That's pretty hard. Almost as difficult as actually moving to Australia. Hint, hint, speak to our friends at True Blue Migration Services. What would you have scored on that test? Would you have got 20 out of 20? Would you have got all of the value questions right? I'm sure for a joke, it's pretty easy to get some of them wrong, but common sense should prevail. Now, a lot of those things I've only really picked up since moving to Australia. But if you're moving over here and you're worried about making the move, then check out this video about things they don't tell you when you first move to Australia. See you later.